Kenya's relationship with the United States has been frosty in the recent past. But President Uhuru Kenyatta's invite to Washington is expected to rebuild bilateral trade relations. There is renewed optimism about the role the U.S. can play in Kenya's development. Only what we are getting help from China is not enough. If we can get infrastructure help, they will open up the country. That's one thing that I think we should certainly do. Number two, if we also can get some more know-how on education, but education-wise, we are okay, but we are not on here. Same thing is health. If we can get some kind of collaboration for the health or institutions, then I think we'll be somewhere we, we will be. So I think to me, a bilateral understanding of investments in, in the country, specifically in the infrastructure, whether it's water, whether it's power, whether it's rail, whether it's roads, energy, whichever way, I think that will open up the country. Of course, tourism will be one of the major gainers because if the U.S. is convinced that Kenya is safe for its tourists, it's one of the major markets. And um, uh, the second sector is actually trade and industry, where we have quite a number of uh, minerals that have been discovered in this country. We have major projects that have been initiated, including the LAPSET, and that which provide uh, big investment opportunities. If you remember the reason the uh, euro bond, how it was successful, so it indicates that Kenya is ready for investment. So if this information can be communicated clearly to the U.S. investors, then uh, the trade and industry sector in Kenya would really receive a big boost. Imports from the U.S. contracted 13% to 57 billion shillings in 2013 due to a reduction in aircraft acquisition. But this may change this year with the delivery of three Dreamliners to Kenya Airways. But the value of Kenyan exports to the U.S. has experienced steady growth at 29.9 billion shillings in 2013, a 71% jump from 2009. What Kenya stands to gain is um, expanded um, a, a range of exports. If um, this can be negotiated so that the access to different types of exports from Kenya can access the U.S. market through the AGOA agreement, then that will be a tangible benefit. Currently, we're only exporting, is it apparel and quite very, very, very limited range of goods. And, and so our trade minister and other delegation members should actually seek expanded yeah, entry of many goods. Kenya's horticulture has also been a key beneficiary of the Africa Growth and Opportunities Act, better known as AGOA, and an extension of 15 years is welcomed. I'm expecting um, an improvement, a robust kind of um, okay, export in the U.S. market, given that now we have this extension, so it gives in farmers a big opportunity and even a stretched uh, time horizon to like, uh, plan in terms of the investment and also looking for new products and even okay, to add on to the portfolio that now we have in the current horticultural that now we export outside there. And right now we've seen another initiative whereby the government has really um, partnered now with the, with the youth and we've seen, I can give an example of greenhouses that are being built everywhere right now. So we are looking for, um, okay, we are, I'm, I'm looking forward to a big market uh, outside there that these youth are going to export outside there. So there'll be a significant increase in exports from horticulture. The U.S. is a major source market for Kenya's tourism sector, a key foreign exchange arm. However, the recent spate of terror-linked insecurity has seen the country reissue travel advisories, attracting some criticism in the country. I think uh, America has overreacted to the security concerns in Kenya because um, we know that uh, insecurity is not just confined to Kenya. It is a world a concern, it's a world challenge. Even the U.S. has also like, suffered terrorist attack. And uh, the, the, the paradox of it is that um, when the U.S. issued travel advisories, we had saw Germans, tourists coming in Kenya. Uh, we've seen Italian uh, tourists coming to Kenya. So I think the U.S. need to appreciate that um, the challenge of security is not a Kenyan affair, but 
That notwithstanding, Kenya has uh, uh, actually a responsibility to put its house in order, to actually en ensure there is security not only for the tourists, but also for the Kenyans. China has been a major development partner for Africa, especially on mega infrastructure projects such as roads, geothermal and ports. The Asian nation's trade volume with Africa stands at 200 billion US dollars, while that of the US, the world's leading economy, is only 85 billion dollars. Was the US-Africa summit a knee-jerk reaction to China's influence on the continent? But I think what is happening is that uh, the world, not only US or China, is realizing that Africa has changed and this is not the Africa of yesterday. We, Africa is ready for growth, for development, and so US would not want to lag behind in this opportunity. And um, despite uh, the, 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 the US kind of pessimism during our 2008 elections, where we remember this, the, the, the phrase, uh, choices have consequences, we have seen the U.S. go ahead and invite our president. And, and it's realized that Kenya is not a country that can be ignored. And so is East Africa. 